This is a reading of A Trip into the Jungle, written by Manoj Das, read by Prerna. Mrs. Mitty heard a knock on the door. There must have been several knocks before she opened her eyes. They were tender, repeated at interval of minutes. The watchman would not dare to otherwise. He knows. She surveyed the hall at her feet, sprawled Raja Sahib, a crumpled pile of filth. Half a dozen flies were picnicking along his bloated lips. And Mr. Chakori, poor snob, snored as a pig grunts. And Mr. Mitty and Mrs. Chakori lay on the floor facing each other, maybe fallen into stupor amidst their efforts to crawl closer. Another knock. Mrs. Mitty woke up by another degree. The sound slashed down a chunk of the massive numbness that had overpowered her memory. She as yet could not recollect exactly when they had collapsed into such dead sleep, although she could recollect all that had preceded. They're dancing around the fire and cutting out and eating slices from the boar which they had thrown into the fire half alive. Their motive had been to turn primitive for a night, as men and women were, they believed, a million years ago. To gods to romp and to be violent. Mr. Chakuri, who styled himself an authority on the benefit of such occasional explosion of passions, had lectured before they began drinking. And who needed that long-winded fellow? on the philosophy of such deliberate relapses. Another knock. Mrs. Mitty recollected rapidly whatever had happened. The day before, in the afternoon. Their jeep was trudging through miles of bushes and scattered rocks of reach this desert bungalow inside the jungle. An injured butterfly got crushed under a wheel and Mrs. Mitty gave a shriek. Her face all butter with pity. You are extremely delicate, child, Mr. Chakuri commented, indulgently, bringing his chubby face with sharply forked moustache close to Mrs. Mitty's as if to lick away the flowing butter. Mrs. Chakuri, her nose contracted as though in an effort to avoid some offensive small and eyes closed, snuffled, a bit too delicate for a wolf like Mr. Mitty. She spoke with a jerk on each syllable. Her words sounded innocent, but she left the atmosphere sick every time she spoke. Mr. Mitty's cigar swung to a corner of his mouth and was lowered, pressed by teeth. A signal for a train observation to rush. The speech would be punctuated by skeptic looks at listeners to examine how much of the wisdom he so generously broadcast they received. He said, to be frank, Mrs. Chakuri, I do not quite understand the mystery that is femininity. But I must confess that Mrs. Mitty has something inexplicable in her which I love most violently. In fact, more than destroying an enemy even after all these years of married life. Shut up, you little monster, protested Mrs. Mitty, waging her handkerchief on her face and her face on the handkerchief. Mrs. Mitty continued to be delicate to the charge of Mrs. Chakuri till the jeep came to a turn showing a semicircular tract to their left. Walled by hills on three sides. Stop! Mrs. Mitty gave out a sudden shout. The jeep jerked to a halt. All sprang out and following Mrs. Mitty's pointed hand stiff as a dagger, focused their eye on a solitary deer at the foot of a hill. Against the glossy dark rocks, that creature looked like a streak of lightning frozen. But soon it stirred and then jumped from bush to bush as the outlet into the jungle had been blocked. All except Mrs. Chakuri had guns in their hands. And Mrs. Chakuri's eyes seem to have got metamorphosed into the pair of bullets on their fairy way to get their target. But the deer took a grand risk. It crossed over the jungle, coming within an ace of the party. Shamil the chauffeur had his barrel pointed right at his head. Shoot! shouted Mrs. Mitty. But Shamil brought down his gun and allowed the deer to pass into the lusty green like an of course wave of golden cascade. And to the five pairs of venom spitting eyes, Shamal explained it was pregnant. Impudence. And how dare he be vulgar. Mrs. Mitty stammered out, anger and frustration clogging her voice. She was on the verge of breaking down. Again you became delicate, madame. I will see that the next chance is entirely yours. Keep the gun close by. Mr. Chakuri consoled her. Mrs. Mitty now sat beside Shamal, the impudent young man who seemed not to care two hoots for their sentiments. His master, Raja Sahib, was his half-brother after all. Shamal being one of the numerous illegitimate children of the late Raja, though quite low in status as his mother had not been a regularized concubine, gloomy, handsome and a skilled shikari. Shamal had all the fine features of his father, whereas Raja Sahib was an ugly ogre. 
Drained of all life from reckless indulgence of late content with hovering around and brushing against and sniffing women. It was precisely for this much benefit that he had arranged the outing and had spruced up his almost abandoned bungalow inside the jungle. For the rest of the way, Shamil sat silent, refusing to get ruffled by the continuous tantrums from Raja Sahib. They reached the bungalow late in the afternoon. After a round of light refreshment and drink, they prepared to go out for Shikar, but Shamil declined to accompany them. Raja Sahib howled threats at him, but in vain. And Mrs. Mitty, who was again observed to be too delicate to have gotten over the shock of losing the deer, stayed back too. Mrs. Chakuri looked askance at Mrs. Mitty, but Mrs. Mitty knew that for Mrs. Chakuri it would be impossible to sacrifice an opportunity for accompanying Mr. Mitty. She did not care if Chakuri, her husband, hovered around. He was incapable of saying bye to a goose. A party set out for the interior of the forest, leaving Mrs. Mitty and Shamal behind. An ominous quiet disturbed by unfamiliar sound from time to time made the Sylvian to light an eerie experience for Mrs. Mitty. She had another drink, alone relaxing in an armchair of the veranda. All of a sudden, she felt challenged by Shamil's obstinate melancholy. What is this sound, Shamil? she queried. A tiger's roar, madame. Mrs. Mitty sprang out of her chair and ran towards the hall. Anne in the hurry fell down at the door and made no attempt at getting up until Shamil came to her aid. And when he came, she raised herself just enough to fall into his arms. And then instead of speaking a word about her sophisticated accident, she observed with a dazzling smile. You are an accomplished shikari, aren't you? How easily you bag. Shamil was amused like a child when taught a funny game by a senior playmate. And for the rest, he behaved obediently but never gave up the quiet smile of irony which at the end of everything did not allow Mrs. Mitty any joy of conquest. Very soon, she felt humiliated and doubly challenged. By the time Raja Sahib and party returned, it was dust. Mrs. Mitty had had an hour's tired sleep and she woke up feeling feverish and opened the door. No sooner had her eyes fallen on Mrs. Chakuri than she realized that Mrs. Chakuri had already imagined a lot of things. Mrs. Chakuri's gaze was fixed on Shamal, then soundly asleep in a corner of the hall. It was a deadly gaze, speaking out how deeply betrayed and aggrieved she felt. Darling, Mrs. Chakuri felt so restless all the while for having left you alone. You have not been inconvenienced, I hope, uttered Mr. Mitty endearingly. Mrs. Mitty, still feeling a bit dazed, but at once determined to shatter Mrs. Chakuri's suspicion and wipe off that irony which she was afraid, was still eloquent on the sleeping shambles obstinately, Ungrateful lips burst forth, dragging Mr. Mitty into the hall by his belt. Do you know, do you know that brute? Well, I had to hit him hard. You mean Shamil? Oh, it was appalling. Who could have dreamt that he was such a rascal? There was a heavy, awkward silence for a while. Then Raja Sahib marched towards the sleeping chauffeur and stood beside him, panting and sweating, perhaps unable to think of what to do next. In the dust, Mrs. Chakuri and Mitty stood immobile as a pair of mummies. The tableau was disturbed when Mrs. Chakuri suddenly burst into sobs and, rushing upon Shamil, began to kick him frantically. Shamil tried to stand up but failed. Neither did he have to look bewildered for long. All except Mrs. Mitty followed Mrs. Chakuri and amidst their wild blows and kicks, with Mrs. Mitty's hysterical laughter rising to a crescendo, he swooned away. They dragged him into a small room where they had just deposited a half-dead boar. Then they sank into the sofas. Raja Sahib asked the watchman to leave them to report early in the morning. The doors were bolted. They retired into a high-walled kitchen garden. They made a fire and sat around it and drank. Later, they dragged out the boar and threw it into the fire and ate half-roasted slices from it and sang and danced, long into the night. Another knock. Mrs. Mitty sat up and looked through the window. It was still dark. From nowhere, a chill of terror crept into her and spread into her whole being and oozed out in a sweat. She called and woke up others. The watchman bared her. He stopped knocking. Raja Sahib was the first to speak. Good morning, everybody. We better arrange for tea. Let me see one. Ha- Let me see what happened to that rogue. Raja Sahib began advancing towards the room into which Shamal had been thrown. Please don't, Mrs. Mitty shrieked and stopped Raja Sahib from advancing. But but why? Stuttered surprised Raja. Don't know. But suppose you see the boar. She asked. Her eyes looked wild. But we roasted and ate up the boar last night, didn't we? But suppose you see the boar instead of... But we didn't, did we? Ate the boar. But suppose you see the boar instead of shamble. 
The deadly silence was broken by a gust of wind that threw a handful of dry leaves into the hall. Someone said, but we can go to the kitchen garden. Much of the boar should still be there. For heaven's sake, let us not, cried out both Mrs. Mitty and Mrs. Chakwadi, if you find the remains to be not of the boar. The sepulchral silence returned. There was a long howl by jackals behind the bungalow. Each could see the others shivering. Two hours later, while Mr. Mitty drove the jeep with others sitting lifeless as sandbags, Raja Sahib tried a laugh. How fantastic was your fancy, or was it a dream, Mrs. Mitty? Nevertheless, you made our blood creep. You are really original, he said. There was no response from either Mrs. Mitty or anyone else. Though I have instructed my watchman, who in the past has done many difficult things for me, to do the needful in case there had really been a confusion on our part last night, I am sure Mrs. Mitty's fear was as unfounded as a ghost, Raja Sahib said again. Who was not sure of that, observed Mrs. Chakwadi and Mitty. It was foolish of us to not open the room or go into the kitchen garden, both sides. I am of course not sure about the ghost being quite unfounded. The bungalow was rumoured to be a haunted house. Ghosts play mischiefs of various sorts. They might very well have played with our idea, making asses of us. Raja Sahib tried another laugh. Mrs. Mitty suddenly burst into sobs and Mrs. Chakori into a hysterical laughter. The rest turned sandbags again. The sobs and laughters of the two women sounded mercilessly crashed under the roar of the jeep trudging through boulders and bushes. Thank you for listening.